I was brought up in a traditional Jewish home in North London. Um, we were what I call semi-observant. My brother was bar mitzvahed when he was 13. But instead of going to synagogue on a Saturday morning, I went to ballet classes. When I was three, it was noticed that I didn't walk properly. My feet turned in and they rolled in. So my mum took me to the doctor and he said, you have two choices, take her ice skating or take her to ballet classes. So I went to ballet classes and first moment I started, I absolutely loved it. And even from the age of three, I knew that was exactly what I wanted to do. So my very first professional appearance was as a snail in the cunning little vixen, complete with slime. It was an absolutely awful costume, but I remember being on stage and it was just the most fantastic feeling. When I was 11, I went to uh, ballet school. And every Sunday, all the girls, because it was girls only school then, we were all sent to church. Every Sunday, I would go sit in a pew in a very cold church, and it was wonderful. I loved it. I loved the um, stained glass windows. And I was fascinated by this one picture above my head, that, which was Christ on the cross. And I could not take my eyes on, off of it because I didn't, I'd never heard about Jesus before. But there I learned to sing all things bright and beautiful. And I heard about the love of God, but I didn't understand the sacrifice of Christ then. But what I did find out was that the people in the church loved us girls and they made us feel so welcome. And it felt like a family and I, I really loved it. When I left that school two years later, I went to the London school and of course didn't go to church anymore. The girls there who were Jewish had formed a little group and I didn't fit in. It was very strange for me and I tended to be friendly with the non-Jewish girls so that when it came to being 16 and 17, 18, I hadn't really got a group that I belonged to. And I felt like that all the way through my journey. And then sadly, just before I was 16, I had my first part de deux class and they partnered me with someone who didn't really speak English very well. Well, the bit about throwing me up in the air was fine. The bit about catching me again was not. I ended up on the floor with two dislocated kneecaps and my career was over. When I was 21, I got married, I had a child and we went to St. Albans Cathedral, St. Albans Abbey. And as I walked in, I had the strangest sensation of almost like water trickling down my body or, or being encased in love. I can't explain that feeling. Well, I couldn't then, but it was a Holy Spirit moment and God really, he just surrounded me by his love. And I just said to my husband, I don't know what's just happened, but I feel like I've come home. And I remember that feeling for a long time afterwards that I was going to synagogue and I never felt that feeling there. And I just somehow couldn't feel the presence of God. I said to myself, God, there has to be something more to a relationship with you than this, because I don't know what's happening. I'd kept a kosher house. I'd changed everything over as a Jewish person should do, Jewish mother. And I did all the rules without understanding the reasons why. So everything I did was out of ritual and regulation. After my two sons were born, I really missed being on the stage. I really had a hankering for performing again. And I found a um, theatre group, amateur theatre group, and they put on shows every year and I joined and I was back on stage again and it was wonderful. The musical director and I became quite good friends and, well, I will just say that I used to go out with him and his boyfriend and mix with his friends and it was wonderful. It, I felt alive again because I was performing and I was with that group a long time but I was noticing a change 
in my friend. And I didn't know what was happening until the day he sat in my house and I happened to use a swear word. And I went, oh, Jesus Christ. And he looked at me and said, don't ever use that name again as a swear word. He may not be your Messiah yet, but he's mine. Oh, and by the way, Jesus is trying to get through to you, but your line's always engaged. And then he said something that I'll never forget. He said, don't wait to believe in Jesus at the 12th hour. You could die at the 11th. And that last comment stayed with me for a very, very long time. So my friend started sharing his faith with me and it didn't quite make sense. The one thing I knew was as a Jew, we are not allowed to even say the name, let alone believe in Jesus. So I had a problem because how I saw him changing and the things that he was telling me they were really attractive to me and it took me back to my time in church and I started thinking there's got to be something to this. My friend then said to me, you will find God when you seek him with your whole heart. And very soon after that, my life fell apart. It was the eve of the Passover. I had found the perfect house to move into and I got a phone call. And the phone call was the estate agent saying, I'm terribly sorry, the lady has withdrawn the house off the market. And I thought, here we go again. I will have nowhere to take my two children to live. I'll have to sell this house. And then what do I do? So I cried out to God, God, if you are real, do you can hear me, please answer me and I heard a voice say what have you just done and I thought I was going crazy I didn't say anything and the voice said I asked you a question what have you just done and I said I changed my house over for the Passover and this voice said what is the Passover and I said well it's when God and that's when I realized I was talking to God. I said, it's when you led the Israelites out of slavery into the promised land. And the voice said, did they know where they were going? I said, no. And he said, oh, ye of little faith, why don't you put your trust in me like your ancestors did? And then the line went dead. So I phoned up my friend and immediately he said, so he finally got through to you then. I said, what? How do you know that? And he told me word for word my conversation with the Lord. And he said, now do you believe in Jesus being your savior? And I went, hang on a minute. I have just heard from God. God Almighty was speaking to me. I'm just believing in God properly now. I haven't got time to believe in Jesus at all. No wonder they call the Jews stiff-necked and obstinate. I'm going to ask you to do something that you shouldn't do, and that's put the Lord your God to the test. Go and ask him if he really is your Messiah. So put the phone down. And I stood in the middle of my morning room with my hands on my hips, and I went, Okay, Jesus, if you're really my Messiah, prove it in my nice kosher house. Show me something with the word Messiah in it, but I bet you can't. And a voice said, go and get your Bible. I was shaking from head to foot, you can imagine, but I couldn't find the book. And I just felt God say, go and get your children's Bible. And in it, there's very few words. There are a lot of lovely pictures. And I put that book on my hand like this and I went, okay, Jesus. Find me somewhere in this book where it says Messiah. And the book dropped out of my hand 
onto the floor on the back page and on the back page in turquoise blue letters and turquoise is my favorite color it said oh god when will you send the messiah to save us and i phoned my friend up again he said i want you to come over and meet someone when the passover was finished i went to his place and who should be standing waiting to go into his place but Helen Shapiro. Well, she then shared how she came to faith. Her musical director had told her about Jesus, the same as mine, amazingly. And our story was very similar. That, you know, she'd been searching and I'd been searching and she explained how Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. And I just said, I'm sorry, but how can a Jew believe in Jesus when we are told how wrong that is? And she was so amazing with me. She took me through so many scriptures, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, all of the ones that led up to the, to the Messiah. And I just realized there and then, Jesus is the Messiah, a uh, problem. I knew I would face so much opposition so I believed, but I couldn't outwardly show it. I was very afraid. And the other thing was, I realized that if that was the case and Jesus was my Messiah and I needed to submit, there were an awful lot of things in my life that I really didn't want to give up. Well, looking back now, I realized that I spent 11 years in the wilderness going round and round the same mountain because I would not submit, I would not give up what I wanted to hold on to so tightly until another dramatic occurrence in my life. And I heard God for the second time say, have I finally got your attention? And I knew that God was really asking me to make that choice. And about six months before that happened, he had introduced me because it's always God who introduces us to the right people. He introduced me to a wonderful lady called Lee. I started to go to her little house group, learning more and more. And she kept on saying, Lynn, you need to make a choice. And it was very hard for me. I'm very stubborn. <laughs> and then when this happened and God said, have I finally got your attention? I phoned up Lee and I said, I think it's time for me to start going to church. So on that Sunday morning, she picked me up. We'd been driving for about 20 minutes and I said, Lee, where are we going? She said, well, it's a nice church, I know. It's very spirit filled. And I said, but aren't there any nice churches locally? And she said, no, we're going to this one. This is where I go. I said, where do you go? She said, the Iranian Christian Fellowship. And I went, Iranians. Iranians are Muslim and they're going to eat me alive. I'm a Jew. What are you doing? Turn the car around. And she said, nope. And I'm so glad she didn't. So we walked into the Iranian church and what I could see was like Iranian writing literally on the wall and all these Muslim people. And I was terrified until I looked at their faces and they were singing worship songs because we had arrived a little late and their faces were glowing and their faces were full of love and their hands were up worshipping which I had never seen before in a nice little church of England church in Tring and it was so different but I can tell you that something inside of me just went wow this is amazing That wasn't what surprised me as much as what the pastor said. And he said, I'd prepared a sermon, but actually I'm not going to give it today. Because there's somebody here that God has been trying to get through to all their life. What he started to say was my life story. Have you been betrayed? Has man betrayed you? There is someone who will never betray you. Have you been looking for love? There is someone who loves you more than you will ever know. And he's loved you since the moment you were formed in your mother's womb. And if that's you, if 
you know that God has been trying to get through to you all your life, but your line's always been engaged. I want you to come forwards. And I couldn't believe it because that was my friend's word, word for word. And I was out my seat. I don't remember getting out my seat. I just felt someone was pulling me forwards. And I was there and I gave my life to the Lord there and then. What happened after the service was even more strange because I'm in an Iranian church and this other, this gentleman, he comes up to me and in a very foreign accent, he says, can I ask you something? Are you Jewish? And I went, oh my goodness, I'm going to be turfed out the church straight away. And I said, yes, I am. Does that matter? He says, no, because I'm Jewish too. It's lovely to welcome you to the family. They were so incredible to me. I became part of their family and I remember one day sitting down in my, my chair, listening to the worship, seeing all these people with such love in their heart for me and such I had such love in my heart for them. I heard God whisper, now you know why I never let you fit in with your people because I wanted you here with my people and it was awesome. After I finally submitted my life to the Lord, it took a very long time for me to pluck up courage to tell people. And the reaction was what I expected. Most of my friends just abandoned me. Even some of my family abandoned me. And whereas I've been part of a community and that was wonderful, with friendships and the way of life, I suddenly found myself literally stranded. I felt like I was adrift on a raft in the middle of an ocean. And it was very strange, but God took me alone so that I could really, really search after him. And he brought these amazing people into my life, one by one, until I really had built up this amazing group of believing friends. And that was apart from the Iranian church. So my life became very full very, very quickly. I am so grateful to the Lord for opening my eyes to such a wider way of living, not being confined. Because instead of having rules and regulations, I've got a relationship. When I look back and compare to how life was before I knew the Lord and now, my biggest regret is that I didn't go sooner and submit sooner to the Lord because I feel those years almost were wasted but God can use everything to his glory but yeah before I really had no hope I didn't know any direction of my life didn't know where I was going and I felt very confined and I've just found a freedom it's almost like breathing fresh air after being in a stuffy room all your life and suddenly you're smelling the aromas that are around you and breathing in pure air. And I have something to live for. I know my purpose now is to just tell everybody about the Lord. And people can see it in my life, how it's changed. It's taken away a lot of my fear. It's given me hope and a promise. And I think it's all summed up in my poem. Out of darkness, light. Out of confusion, truth. Out of weakness, strength. Out of despair, hope. Out of sadness, joy. Out of emptiness, a future. Out of loneliness, a friend. Out of regulations, relationship. Out of condemnation, grace. Out of judgment, acceptance. Out of sin, a saviour. And not because of anything I have ever done, but because God so loved the world.